you for that. What I'll do is we'll read our scripture, pray for the song, and uh, Sarah will sing for us. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. This is prophesied. Isaiah was a prophet. Uh, the thing about the birth of Christ is it was, um, uh, I'm not quite sure the order, but I guess you could say it was promised. It was prophesied. Uh, and then it was proclaimed once it was done. Uh, God promised a Savior. Once that fact was known, it was began to be uh, 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 prophesied by in old time by prophets. And the way that we know that they are prophets now is what they prophesied came true. <laughs> and then now it's being proclaimed. So right here, what Isaiah proclaimed, uh, we now, or uh, prophesied, we now proclaim. Uh, the Bible says in uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6, uh, uh, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for your son. You promised it, and you don't break your promises. I thank you for the men that prophesied it to give hope to people who lived in darkness. And then it was proclaimed after it was accomplished. The Christ has come, the Messiah has come to save his people from their sins. Lord, thank you so much for saving me. That I don't have to die and go to hell because of Christmas Day. Born to die upon Calvary. Lord, help us to reverence this day. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let me introduce this message by making a statement. And the statement is, is what is, the question first is, what is the significance of the birth of Christ? What is the significance of Christmas? Putting aside the historical, how it came together, I'm talking about why we as Christians, born-again Christians, um, celebrate the birth of Christ. Um, let me make it very, especially even for kids to understand. The significance or the importance or the meaning of it is so strong, is so meaningful, that you mean nothing. You and I mean absolutely nothing if Christ didn't come for us. Matthew says it, Mark says it, Luke says it, because all of those are vantage points of, of the words of Christ. Jesus said, for what does it profit a man? What is a man profited if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Now, did you know that if Jesus Christ wouldn't have came, our souls would be lost? Because Scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, the reason why pastors and, and churches, they, they encourage and push and even sometimes pressure people into ministry is sometimes we get it wrong and, and, and our intentions are pure, but maybe our methods are, don't, aren't always the right way, you know, because people are human, they burn out, and, and, and people are, you know, people are difficult to work with. Not everybody's the same. Um, the reason why we, we encourage people to get in ministries is because if you take the talents and the abilities that you have and you use them for anything other than something that would last for eternity, it means nothing. Your significance is zero. Zero. I, I, and I don't, and I'm, I look, I love sports and everything, but everybody's names that are on plaques and they have their busts and pictures and all those and, and, and Hall of Fames, that means nothing. It doesn't mean, it means zero. Your accomplishments, your diplomas, it may mean something to make a life here, but it means zero. Scripture says that for the Christians, when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, that every, all of our deeds will be put on the altar and they'll be tried by fire. That fire, that heavenly fire, will consume it. And the Bible says whatever is burnt up is a loss, and whatever remains is your reward. That's, that's yours. So that always puzzled me. What does that mean? How that? And I came across through commentaries and through studies, through other sermons and through scripture, through meditation. The Bible tells us to meditate on things. I thought, okay, what is the wood, hay, stubble? Wood, hay, stubble is the things I do on earth for earth. The things that I do here for here. And the gold, silver, and precious stones are the things that I do here for heaven. The words that I speak, the thoughts that I think, the deeds that I do, the prayers that I pray, the, the, the blood that I, that I bleed, the tears that I shed, the sweat that comes from my brow. I used to resent being the guy who had to run the weed eater and shovel and snow. And, and I've been that guy since I could do it. There, and there's been a slew of us, tons of us. But I remain. And that's not a pat on my back. And I used to resent it and go, why do I, why do I? Now I look at it and go, gold, silver, precious stones. You say a shovel is gold, silver, precious stones? Absolutely. Absolutely. You say, sitting my child on my lap and, and quoting Bible verses to them is gold, silver, precious stones? Absolutely. Every church service is gold, silver, precious stones. Every tithe is gold, silver, precious stones. Every soul that hears the spread of the word of God is gold, silver, precious stones. Gold, silver, precious stones. I think yesterday, um, uh, spending time with family, that God instituted marriage and the family and the church. He, he instituted those. Uh, and I, I need to get to my message real quick, but I'm saying the birth of Christ is so significant that if it didn't happen, you and I are just pieces of dust floating through the cosmos and every atheist and every, and, every, and every scientist who believes in the Big Bang and every evolutionist and everybody who believes these theories on where we came from, they might as well just be right. But they're not. 
Let God be true and every man a liar. The birth of Jesus Christ was promised and it happened. Now, 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ, Isaiah said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Uh, I want to make a quick note. People say that Jesus could not possibly be God. It says right here, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon their shoulder. And the name, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty, capital G, God. The mighty God. That's just, that's free for anybody who doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is God. Uh, Muslims, for that matter. Um, Now, the prophecy was fulfilled um, in those words. It was fulfilled, and then um, we were given John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ was God's Christmas gift to us. Now, uh, Jesus did not come to create a holiday. Jesus came to save his people from their sins. Uh, I'm glad that I am of the people of Jesus. You say, well, who are, who are God's people? Well, mankind was created in the image of God. But then mankind sinned against God. I've had conversations leading people to the Lord before where it's you have to pick a side. You choose to believe or you choose to deny it. You, I mean, I, I'm not a smooth talker. I don't think I'd ever be a good salesman because it's basically if you're not buying, I'm not selling. Do you want what I have? You don't want what I have? I'm not trying to talk you into it. I'm not necessarily a smooth talker. Hear the facts, accept it, or take it or leave it. And now I understand You can't go out and just kind of be rude while you're soul winning. You want to convince people. You want to compel people. So I asked the Lord to give me a, you know, a soft touch. Remember, I was talking to a guy out here. His name was David Jackson. Dad, you remember him? Wore a ball cap, was standing on our porch. You set it up, and you went inside, and I was leading to the Lord, and and you came out after it was all done, and you're like, Jake, your body language. You know, you're like, on the dude. Relax. You know, open up a little. So I don't want to just... Throw it in people's faces, but that's what it comes down to. Pick, pick Jesus or, 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 or something else. Jesus was God's Christmas gift to us, and God never, listen, God never gives us anything but the best. God never gives us anything but the best. Now, sometimes we take that and mess it up, don't we? Sometimes we, God gives us a stained glass window and we throw a baseball through it. Sometimes, you know, God has given us, listen, God has given us an incredible, there is nothing built on this planet like the human body. God gave it to us, and we mess it up, don't we? (laughs) And sin, let alone sin, but God gives us the best. He says in Scripture, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now, with, um, uh, uh, I think, with great gratitude, Paul wrote in uh, 2 Corinthians 9, he said, Thanks be unto God for this unspeakable gift. Now, I have some presents for my kids today that I'm excited. I'm more excited for them to get it than I think they'll be. Now, they're, I mean, they're going to be juiced up about it. Uh, yesterday, I got um, um, Duke Cannon soap. It's a big old stinking brick of soap, and it lasts forever. Cool. Makes everything smell good. I like that stuff. Uh, but then I needed work gloves. Dealing with the chains and the binders and all the metal and the, and the, land, and the landing gears and pulling the release pin. And my gloves get tore up quick. Quick. Um, and I asked for a pair of work gloves. And I got three of them. I'm like, sweet. You know, as you get older, your priorities of what you need change. You know, are like, you know what, I, I actually need some socks this year. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> as kids, we're like, socks? Come on, man. Uh, but that's a gag gift, isn't it? But as you get older, you're like, you know what? I need some socks. Uh, uh, and, and your priorities change. But have you ever received an unspeakable gift? I, I've received all kinds. I mean, tickets to the Hoosiers Classic. All kinds of awesome gifts that we've got before. But nobody's ever saved me from eternal fire. Nobody's ever forgiven my continual sin. 
Nobody's ever said, my grace is sufficient for you. No human. The unspeakable gift that says, Jake, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter what you say, I will always love you. And I don't deserve that. And I like Paul said, thanks be to God for this unspeakable gift. Christmas is a great time of year for a Christian. It's a time when we should turn our thoughts to gifts and to giving. Man, I like giving good gifts. I like giving good gifts. I like receiving them, of course. But man, I, as a man, if I need something, I'll go buy what I need. Please don't buy me anything. Just, to, just so you can fulfill your need of, I got him something. I want to give him something. I want to show him that I, I know that you love me. I know that you do. I know my family loves me. I know that. And by the way, I, you're not going to buy the thing that I asked for anyway. <laughs> He's going to give me something. I'm going to go, oh, thank you. And I, you know, that's wonderful. And smell the cologne and go, I'll never use that. Uh, you know, I use that to spray my shoes, you know. I don't <laughs> oh, hi, Lucas. Um, usually I pry and find something. Uh, you know, during Christmas, I'm like, oh, I know what they got me. This year I didn't. I'm not prying. I don't care. But I said, um, Lucas, I asked for soap. Lucas, I can't believe you asked for soap. I could walk around stinking. Is that what you want? Give me some soap. But I told him, uh, you know, this. I said, what'd you do? Give me some cologne. And you could see it on his face. My dad always told me, get that look off your face. I'm like, what look? Now that I'm a dad, I can see the looks. It's incredible. <laughs> Same thing as becoming a parent. He said, when you get older, you'll know the difference between the cries. When I was a kid and a teenager, I'd hear a baby crying. I'm like, shut that baby up. But now I know the difference between sadness and pain and brat. Um, you know, and, 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 and comfort, you know, when he, when the kid stinks, he'll let you know. He doesn't have to cry. He's just, it's, but, but an unspeakable gift. And this time of year as Christians, we're supposed to turn our thoughts to that. And, and we spend, as a country, we spend enormous amounts of money on stuff made in China, 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 China. It's like, I don't want that plastic garbage. Let's carve something. Go out and do something. I, I, Sam and Michael got me a shirt, um, Carhartt shirt, and I looked at the tag. It said, Made in Guatemala. I'm like, sweet, cool. Not made in China. I'll take it. Made in Guatemala. Uh, gracias, if that's accepted down there. Uh, but um, uh, Christmas is that time of year where we, we, we turn our attention to buying and to going and to making and creating and to festivities, and I, I like that. And giving, by the way, is a Christian virtue. It's a Christian virtue. The world may not accept that, but it's a Christian virtue and we're not supposed to take it lightly. I think it's incredibly sad uh, that many people um, live life and they live it in ignorance of the joy of giving. I like, I've never been able to, I've never had so much to be able to give, but I got a little bonus at work on my check and it was more than I expected. Or not more, it was something I wasn't expecting. So I took a portion of it and played pick a hand with people. I like doing that. Jeremy's like, you're giving money away. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Everybody needs a dollar here or there. So think of me next time you get a bonus. <laughs> it's that time of year, and if you don't know the joy of giving, you know, these gloves and these coats, and I'd like to do, um, we talked about gift cards. I wrote it down. I didn't just do that for visual and, and optics, you know, to make the auditorium look like it's got something going on. If you read those, we want to do something for people who don't have things. And to see somebody thankful. I shared a video on, online. I didn't mean to. Um, uh, I sent it to Jesse because it made me tear up. This little old nothing of a guy, a red-headed dude. Sarah, you know what I'm talking about? Walks into a gas station, has a walker. He's got that disease where he's slumped over. You ever, what's it called? scoliosis um, I didn't know I, I, usually I see a lot of older people with it this guy was older and he walked into a gas station and the guy said hey and he called his name how you doing and he said oh you know it could be better it could be better and he said hey somebody and social media it's got it's it's it's, it's um, most bad but there's some good stuff on there and he said hey man somebody got you a present and for me for me somebody got something for me you could see it on his face, and he said, I can't believe it. Somebody got something for me, and he opened it up, and it was a sweater. And he said, oh, I needed this. Winter's coming along. I needed this as he's crying. He said, I needed this so badly. 
I needed this so badly as he began to tear up. I screenshotted the, the video of his face. And I said, that was me without Christ. I needed it so badly. Winter's coming. Hell is coming. Hell is coming. I heard a lady say the other day, I, I, I don't know that I could live with the diagnosis of knowing that I was dying. Lady, you are dying. You are dying. Where are you going when you leave here? The ultimate gift is Jesus. So as we turn our attention to gifts and to giving this Christmas season, I want us to think on the fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, um, Romans 8.32, it says, um, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Salvation is the free gift. Salvation is the free gift. As I was in, um, where was I? Charlotte, North Carolina. It was a really cold night. Homeless fella laying in a, under a, um, like a strip mall roof there, you know, the walkway. Laying there, covered up. And I walked by, I went to KFC, I got myself some chicken, and I got him some chicken too. And I walked by, I said, hey man, you like chicken? Boop, he hopped up. Yes, I like chicken. I said, you want Mountain Dew or Pepsi? I'll take the Pepsi. I said, man, there's biscuits. I said, there's um, macaroni and cheese. Here's the fork, da-da-da. And then uh, I walked over to my truck. I had this sweater. Uh, it, it's, it looks like a hippie sweater. Uh, but I got it at a truck stop, and it's, it's knit, it's... it's Oh, it's kept me warm for a long time. And I got it. I rolled it up and I walked over to him. I said, hey, man, this will help keep you warm. This will help keep you warm. Put some food in his belly. Warmed him up. I couldn't give him a house to sleep in. I, got, I couldn't help him. I couldn't give him everything that he would need. And he's probably there because of his own decisions. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't need help. And God said, I gave you my son. I'll give you anything and everything that you need. So very quickly, I'm going to give you a couple points. We got an undeserved gift. I did nothing to earn it. I did nothing besides be in need. Several times uh, this Christmas, people have asked me, what would you like for Christmas? Brother Jake, Pastor Jake, Dad, what do you want, what do you want for Christmas? I've asked my children, what do you want for Christmas? I've asked Jamie, what do you want for Christmas? My mom, um, what, do you, what do you want for Christmas? And many times, uh, uh, Christmas gifts are the result of a specific request. So more just along the lines of, what would you like? Okay, I'm going to go get it and put it in paper and give it to you. Um, and it's neat, but Christmas isn't supposed to be that way. Christmas is supposed to be something we observe throughout the year. See a need, fill a need. Say, you know what, I know that they like this specific thing. I'm going to get that for them. Knowing that they broke something or lost something or need something replaced, and you get it for them. But I went through, I've gone through my life. I did nothing to earn this gift. Folks, it wasn't man who saw his need and asked God for help. It was the Father who saw mankind's need and extended help. I did nothing to earn it. When our... Um, I guess you could call them our ancestors. <laughs> Adam and Eve sinned. They fled from the presence of God. It wasn't Adam who saw it. It wasn't Adam who saw his need and sought the Father, but it was the Father walking in the cool of the day, looking, Adam, Adam, where are you, Adam? Where are you, Adam? It was God who asked, where art thou? It wasn't Adam who said, where are you, God? Where are you? Folks, salvation is not an afterthought from God. The Bible says uh, the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. Salvation was planned for man from the beginning. Mankind will fall. Mankind will be redeemed. Sinners are pictured in the Bible as lost sheep. Lost sheep. And the Bible says all we like sheep have gone astray. Isaiah chapter 53. I'm told that sheep are dumb. Anybody ever heard that before? Geographically? They're dumb. They just kind of, they stray. They stray, and shepherds spend a lot of time going and finding those lost, <laughs> those lost sheep. Lost sheep will never, usually, never, if it is, it's on accident. 
They'll never find their way home, but they'll wander farther and farther and farther away. I saw a video not long ago where there was a ravine, very tight ravine, where they made a, a cut for something, and a sheep was stuck down in there. And a man was pulling on that leg and pulling on that leg and pulling, and finally that sheep got uh, uh, set free and it went bounding away only to go right back in the ditch again. Done it. <laughs> Been there, done that. What does the father do? He walks. What does the shepherd do? He walks up, pulls on my leg again. But this time he's got that prod. Sucker, go the other way. Let's <laughs> go away from there, you big dummy. All we like sheep. All we like sheep. Doesn't say will, it says have gone astray. We, that means we're lost. The Bible says all we, mankind, not just saved and backslidden, but mankind has gone astray. All we like sheep have, have gone. We're gone. But the father left the 90 and 9 to go find the one. Now, I think it's a, a blessing. I love Christmas season. You see, I'm wearing my green suit coat, red tie. I'd never do this on a regular Sunday. I look like a Christmas tree. I was almost going to put ornaments on me, you know. Uh, but um, uh, uh, I like the Christmas season. I like the colors. I like the songs. I like the, the season. I, I, had a, a, I think we had a wonderful time growing up in our house this Christmas season. The house was decorated. We always watched them. Um, and I don't mean necessarily appropriate, but Christmas appropriate stuff that had like a message behind it. People helping people, hard-hearted, hearts melting, uh, Scrooge's turning back, and, and um, uh, all, you know, the, the Christmas message. Kindness and love and giving and Christ and family and coming together. I love the Christmas season. And I like to think about the greatest gift that was ever, ever undeserved or unsolicited. We didn't ask for it. But the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. No, you didn't ask for it, but I see what you need. You didn't ask for it. There are things in this room we didn't ask for, but God looks and says, I know that you need it, and I'm going to provide it. God's Christmas gift was undeserved, and amen, it's unlimited. It'll never run out. It will never run out. A lot of places, listen, uh, we were looking for cinnamon rolls. This store doesn't have them. This store doesn't have them. This store doesn't have them. Jamie was looking for presents, right? We're looking for specific presents. Couldn't find it. Not there. I went in. Uh, Jay, there was a, a, a wallet, just one that Jamie said, oh, I don't have to take the whole purse. I don't have to watch it, you know, in the, in the cart the whole time or zip tie it to the kid, you know. I don't. If they're going to take one, just might to take both. Um, uh, but um, uh, uh, you watch it the whole time. There's a nice little wallet. She could slip in her pocket and, and go do what she needed to do. And... Um, I was like, cool. You know, Jamie doesn't say ooh about a lot of stuff. You know, we don't go to the store and she's like, oh, if it's, the only things that she likes is she doesn't like sparkly if it's soft. Is it soft? She buys clothes according to their softness. No thanks. No thanks. Um, blankets, like she uses a different blanket than I do sometimes because she's like, I don't like that. Well, I do. You do you, I'll do me. You sleep over there, Grinch. Uh, uh, but, um, uh, just kidding. Uh, but um, uh, what do they do? When we go and look for things and they're not there, they ran out. They're out of it. They don't have any more of it. And <laughs> what happens? So they're so expensive, most people can't even buy them. You're like, oh, man, that's out of my price, price range. I'd like to get that. I, Jamie and I did that. I was like, oh, man, that's a great gift. And I saw it at a, uh, at a discount store, and I'm like, okay, it's still expensive. I'm not going to get it yet. Let me think about it. So we went to another store, and we debated. We talked about it. I'm like, all right, I'll go get it. I went back to get it, and it was gone. Ah, man, come on, Fort Wayne local marketplace, amen. Uh, meet me here, at gas pump number 14, under the lights. If you do anything crazy, I got somebody that's got a scope on you right now. <laughs> Don't mess with me. Uh, but um, uh, we run out of things, they're too expensive, we can't get them. But God's Christmas gift is unlimited. It's unlimited. Every day. Every day, Lamenta Lamentations chapter, 20, uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. His compassions, they fail not. His mercies, they don't fail. They're new every morning. Why? Because great is his gift. Great is his gift. For God so loved the world, amen, 
Jesus Christ was God's gift to the entire world. No one. He was, he was the gift to the Muslims. He was gift to the Jews. He was gift to the Gentiles. He was gift to the barbarians. He's gift to, in, to the atheists. He's gift to the pagans. He was the gift to anybody who would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Turn to Christ. Turn away. We're talking about repentance and salvation on Sunday nights. What is that all about? Repentance is very simply turn from what you believed to Christ. That's repentance. Repent. The Bible says the word. All right, well, then what does the word mean? Let's not shy away from it. Now, let's not ignore it. Let's not try to just make it fit our narrative. No, let's find out what it means. Repent means to turn from what you believed about salvation and eternity or the, or the thought that there wasn't one to Christ. If you turn to Christ and say, I fully believe and lean on Christ, that is repentance. Turn from what you did believe to Christ. I have very, I don't, you know, I don't even have very little patience. I have no patience with people who teach, um, and, and this is deeper doctrine, but it's called limited atonement. Limited atonement. That Jesus Christ died only for some, and that those some will be saved regardless of whatever happens. Well, then what's the point of go ye therefore and teach all nations? If that's true, then why do we need to go teach nations? And that's not the teaching of the Bible. The Bible says that he died for every man, no matter how educated, uneducated, no matter how wealthy or poor, no matter how privileged or underprivileged, no matter how um, unloved and unwanted, like the fatherless and the widows and those in prison and those who are in the nursing homes, those castaway people, those undesirable people, God died for them too unloved and unwanted. I think about it and my heart breaks over children who are living with adults who don't care. Little kids right now sleeping on filthy mattresses. God loves them. We have um, someone who went to our school, went to our church, went soul winning, went to conferences, um, turned to a homosexual lifestyle, lesbian lifestyle, was involved in a relationship with a woman who was abusive, and this church member's lesbian wife beat the church member's child to death while she sat there and watched and had the other two kids hold him down. She got 20 years in prison just the other day. We live our lives of comfort and solitude and confinement and we close out the rest of the world. And I understand that we have to read the headlines in moderation because too much of that stuff will make your heart sick. Bombs and violence and protests and poverty and famine and we look at that and go oh my heart my heart my heart but if we would turn to the manger and turn to the cross and say there's hope there's hope you see this life is a this it's wretched make the best of it while you can if you don't know christ live it up because this is as good as it gets but if you do know christ this is as bad as it gets. Hey, folks, you can get cancer. You could lose your leg. You could lose your eyesight. I closed my eyes for about a half hour the other day going, man, I couldn't imagine being blind. I, I don't, wow. Losing a child. Kirsten. Hey, she'll walk again. Cancer will be gone. Sight will be restored. Limbs will be restored. The deaf will hear. The dumb will speak. They, they already are. They're in D.C. Uh, uh, <laughs> but God loves everyone. No one will die and go to hell and look back to heaven and say, I wanted to be saved, but Jesus didn't want me. I'm too bad for hell and heaven doesn't want me. That's bull. Heaven does want you. Heaven wants the biker. 
Hanging, heaven wants the gang member. Hang, uh, heaven wants the homo. You say, you say, what? No, there are no homos in heaven. There are no bikers in heaven. There are no murderers in heaven. There's only the redeemed. There's only the, bought, there's only the blood bought, amen. There are no adulterers in heaven. There are no uh, um, uh, 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 wicked in heaven. You say, well, then how did that person die and go to heaven? How did that, um, what was that, that biker lady's name, Dad? What was her name? Sally? Sally Stuff. Sally Stuff. The man burned in that explosion, laying on that bed, hard heart. But when he realized hell was on, hell, he was on the doorstep of hell, but he didn't have to go there. Stick your tongue out if you can hear me. Once for no and twice for yes. Answer my questions. Did you pray that prayer? Do you believe on Jesus? Stuck his tongue out twice. There are no wicked in heaven. There's only the redeemed. And I've, I've, been, I've done wickedness, but I'm going to heaven. You say, how, do you, how can you be so bold to say that you're going to heaven? How can you be so confident to say that you're going to heaven? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall, not might be, not hopefully, not go through these tests, not take these classes, not get baptized, not tithe, not pray the rosary. But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and say, Lord, save me, shall be saved. You say, Brother Jack, this is about Christmas. What are we doing about salvation? That's what Christmas is all about. To save his people from their sins. No one in hell today or ever is going to look up to heaven and say, I wanted to be saved, but you wouldn't save me. No, everybody that's in hell is going to say, I should have been saved. I should have listened. I should have uh, walked the aisle at that church. I shouldn't have closed the door on those people. Brother Alex and I went soul winning a few weeks ago and, and knocked on a door. The very first door we knocked on, an elderly, elderly man came to the door, looked at us, said no words, just turned around, shut the door, and walked away. Thou fool. Tonight thy soul shall be required of thee. Thou fool. He didn't even give us a chance. He didn't even give Jesus a chance. No one is going to be able to blame Jesus. The gift is available to anyone and to everyone, and no one is excluded except the one who excludes himself by refusing to trust Christ. You excuse yourself by saying no to Christ. In one of the last great invitations found in the Bible, the Bible says in Revelation twenty two seventeen, 17, whosoever heareth, shout, shout the sound, spread the blessed tidings all the world around. Now this is a song. Tell the joyful news wherever man is found, whosoever will may come. Whosoever will may come. Come and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Freely. Anybody take the water of life freely? I took it. Nothing required. I took the water of life. I took Jesus, and he didn't require anything of me. Now you say, well, why are you a pastor? Why are you a soul winner? Why do you work in ministry? Why do you pray? Why do you read your Bible? Why do you do these things? I do it because he saved me. I do it because I want my life to count for something. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? What can a man then give in exchange for his own soul? Once you've lost it, there's no deals with God. God's already laid out the deal. God's already put out the plan. And it's the mankind to follow that plan. I thank God for the manger. And I thank God that Jesus went through and said, not my will, not my will, not my will, but thy will be done, Lord. I'll die upon the cross. I'll be nailed to the tree. Jake Jackson right there. Jamie Jackson right there. Three Rivers Baptist Church right there. The world right there. The blood that flowed down my body. I did it because it was the will of God. But I did it for the world. God gave his son. It doesn't say Jesus gave himself. Now, he, he and I... Other scriptures, he gave himself as, a, as a, um, a sacrifice for the world and mankind. But the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his son. He gave him for me. I didn't deserve it. And I thank God that it's unlimited. He saved me. He's continuing to save me. And he will save me. I'm saved through and through. Not because I'm something special, but because he is. We had somebody here not long ago who who just shook their head no the whole time at, this, at the gospel message. No, no, no. 
you'll be shaking your head for eternity, sadly. Saying, no, no, no. I should have listened. I should have listened. I, I, I have many others, but I'm going to stop. It's unchanging. He doesn't change. The Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That little baby Jesus who grew up is for me. But the sad thing is, is many people will not take the present that's under the tree today or tomorrow or the day after. 365, 24-7, there's a gift that's available for people. And many people reject it. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe that my children will receive a present today and go, nah, I'm not going to open that. But the sad thing is, is many people will have a gift given to them. It's just a simple track. It's not the prettiest or the best. And we're designing some stuff. We're working on it. But when we give a gift to people and they say, nah, not going to open that. Just as that man who I recall so many times, I gave him a track as he was walking down the side, walking up to his house. I said, hey, can I give you an invitation to my church? Oh, oh, wow. I'm glad that's not a car who's sticking somebody's head here. I just meant to do that and blew away. He took it and said, Bleh. crumbled it up first. I don't expect anybody will do that with a present today. But I don't want that. But so many people take Jesus. And they throw them away. So many people take Jesus and they don't claim him. Unclaim, the unclaimed gift. I'm glad I redeemed that gift, amen. I'm glad I claimed it. The sacrifice to purchase Christmas gifts the one, for the ones that we love, it takes a lot of work, effort, gas and frustration and standing in lines. These gifts that we take, they're wrapped in all kinds of, I, man, I wrapped some presents the other day. I'm like, I should not be wrapping presents. This is, who's I with? I said, I was with Lucas, and I did one so bad. I'm like, Hudson did this one, okay? <laughs> Hudson, come here. Put your hand on this wrapping paper. Okay, Dad. All right, you help me wrap it. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, uh, but Jamie's all, it looks all nice. I'm like, I, I couldn't do that. And people take time, and. I look at that, and I'm like, man, all them. Jimmy stayed up late, getting things prepared, working hard. And I got up this morning and looked, and I'm like, man, she set everything out. I'm like, these kids do not deserve the effort she puts into this stuff. These kids, and now I do, but these kids, <laughs> they do not deserve this. And, folks, when we look at our lives and know that the presence of God is real in it, and we can look at the cross, and remember the manger, we can say, man, we do not deserve this. See, folks, if you claimed salvation, Scripture says you can freely, God will give you freely all things. Why don't you claim his grace every day? Why don't you remember Lamentations chapter 3 that his mercy is new every day? Claim it. Claim the promises of the Bible. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall knock. Or, or knock and you shall, and you shall be opened unto you. Claim that grace. Claim it. The significance of the manger makes you significant if you claim the gift. Have you claimed the gift? If you claimed the gift of salvation, say amen. 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 I saw some people. Did some people? Let, let's convince me. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. amen. Mr. Pitt did it for everyone. <laughs> amen. If you're not saved, if you're not saved, today's the day. Don't walk out of here not knowing for sure. These are promises. You're not going to live a perfect life. Life is going to be confusing. The more of the world you put in, the more foggy it gets. The more of this you, you go, ah, but there's a promise that he died for you, he was born for you, he died for you, 
He loves you and he wants to save you. Would you bow your head and close your eyes, please? Now, I had everybody say amen. But if you're not saved, I want to give you a chance this morning. Nobody's looking around, just me. I need to know. If you're not saved, if you do not know for sure that if you died today and go to heaven, but you do want to know, you say, man, I, I need to know for sure. I need to get saved. I need to ask Jesus into my heart. I need to trust him. I haven't trusted him. Maybe you've just been playing the game, putting on the show. If you do not know for sure that you would go to heaven if you died today, would you raise your hand? Is there anybody in here that says, I don't know, but I do want to know? Okay. I say, okay. All right, I'll take care of that. Good. All right, everybody in here, born again. You claim salvation. If he gave us his son, why would he hold his grace back? Why would he hold his mercy back? Why don't you this morning, last altar call of 2022, why don't you stand with me, if you would, stand with me. Stand with me. I'm going to have Miss Jennifer play in just a moment. Why don't you decide to come forward and claim something this morning? The unclaimed gift. Hey, Christian, what, it, what has God promised that you haven't claimed? He promised his son. We claimed him. He promised us mercy and grace and patience. Let's claim it. Miss Jennifer, would you begin to play, please? Come